I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Did she get the job? Good job. Good job. There is something very special about this shop. So the guy's just giving Trudy a little check underneath, just seeing if he can find the leak. We're Chris and Marianne, and we've been traveling full time for the past three years. We're currently attempting to drive Trudy, our home on wheels, all the way around the world. So this morning, I've made minimum for our Swiss neighbors because they haven't tried it before. Morning guys, minimum. <laughs> wow, look at wow, that. That looks good. So it's tomatoes and peppers and uh, eggs and you dump your bread and there's cheese on top. Perfect. And uh, we had such a good time with these guys. Chris here got his guitar out the other night and uh, we had a real party uh, with the Turkish neighbors who unfortunately left already. Um, but we had a really, really good time. Yeah, that's what we had. And I wonder if we will ever be apart. I put you in shiny boxes in my head and in my heart. Oh, oh, oh. We did a bit of Turkish dancing. This is the joy of being in a van, meeting people on the road. You meet real lovely people. Chris is a musician and his beautiful wife is an interior designer. So they are so cool. <laughs> and they've got a cool van. We feel so cool and lucky to be next to cool people. Trudy versus the vintage VW. The cool bus. But it's looking cool. But you okay. have it on your shirt, so... There yeah. you go, we got the Vanaholic, also available on our shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you reckon on the food? Is it it's okay? all gone. <laughs> he, hates, food? he hated yeah. it. It's terrible. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for another one. Oh, ah. I know, right. So we've jumped back into Trudy. We're going to head to the nearby town of Abenos, which is about 15 minutes drive. We went there last year, but there's a museum that is a little bit unusual that we're gonna go and check out. So we've arrived in Avanos, and I think I know where we're going. I've looked at Google Maps and uh, I'm pretty sure I got an inkling of uh, which direction we're going. Although um, where we're going is a bit weird, if you ask me. <laughs> You'd have to wait and see for that one. I've forgotten how pretty Avanos is with the river. And they've got this lovely hanging bridge. This is where we came last year. It's bouncing today. I don't remember it being so bouncy, but it is a suspension bridge. So with the stabilisation, it probably doesn't quite show how the, how the bridge is moving. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Yeah, hush it's really wobbling today, the old bridge. I feel like I've had a beer. Yeah. <laughs> or two. Not yeah. next to the bridge and the mosque, you got all the ice cream stands and uh, Old Town is that way, which is where we went last year. We're heading a little bit to the right here this time. If you're looking for cash points in uh, Avanos, there's a whole bank of them right next to the mosque on the road that uh, leads up to the hanging bridge. One thing you'll find in Avanos is pottery and uh, walking all the way down these back streets of Old Town. The shops are just filled with uh, lovely, lovely pottery shops. You can even get a donkey, Marianne. Find a donkey. <laughs> so this is where we've come to. When we looked online at Avanos to try and find some interesting things Hello. to do. How are you? Marhaba, good evening. Good evening. Nasılsın? Teşekkür ederim. Siz nasılsınız? İyiyim, teşekkürler. It's a pottery store, uh, but also it has a very unusual museum. So we're going to go in and have a little look. This is nice. So if you come into uh, into this uh, shop they give you a demonstration on uh, making pottery which is obviously what Avanos is famous for he's working the uh, clay there the wheel is being turned by foot it's not automated at all there's no buttons it's all footwork
talking to Recep, he was just explaining that he's been doing this for 22 years. <laughs> and it literally looks like it. It looks so easy, but it's clearly not. What a wonderful experience to watch that. We thought it would be good if uh, Marianne gave it a go. There's an apron for you behind. Thank you. Okay, so Marianne's now doing her bit. I feel a ghost moment coming Thanks on. To play. You can start. Doing what? Yes. Uh, squeezing. Oh, I'm squeezing. <laughs> Big muscles. Big muscles. Okay. okay. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Again, what's it? Again. Oh, oh, again. Oh, oh, oh, oh, my oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Kaput. What is this? <laughs> oh my goodness! Look how easy that. Oh, Marianne, that I'm looks really good. Big mustard. Big must. He didn't help at all. 10 minutes after mustard. Did she get the job? Good job. Good job. $2,000. Whoa! Okay. Okay. You don't go, she's doing a demonstration. Oh no. <laughs> Look at that! Marianne made that without any help. Uh, uh. <laughs> there was only a little bit of help. So that's interesting. Rajat was just saying that the men would be the potters and the women would be the carpet makers in the olden days. Amazing. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at that tree. There's another room here. Just so much pottery to come and have a look at. So all the way on the wall in the in the store here, they've got uh, Gallup, who is the uh, owner and founder of this shop, and uh, he's got a very interesting story. This is him here. So in the room behind us, there is something very special about this shop. There are over sixteen thousand hair samples. This is actually a hair museum. Now you may be asking, why is there a hair museum? The guy that owns this shop, years ago he had a French girlfriend. When she left, he asked for a memory and she cut some of her hair and she stuck it on the wall here. And all these years later, visitors come and they put their hair on the wall. It's so famous that it's actually number six in the Guinness Book of Records in the most bizarre museum. You can see it just behind me. Unfortunately, we can't film inside because what they do is everybody that leaves their hair, they leave their details, their name and their contact details because every year he gives away a prize of a week's in all-inclusive stay here in Cappadocia. So if you want the chance to win, you can come and add your hair to the collection. What a mad idea. So that was a crazy experience. The Hair Museum, you have to go and visit it. It is literally wall to ceiling with dangly bits of hair. And it's a bit freaky. It was a little bit freaky. It's like a, a tunnel and different cave rooms that go off and there's different <laughs> coloured hairs and there's all with a phone number or a, uh, a Pictures. Name pictures of themselves, different colour hair, different lengths hair, and they're all just hanging. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, I have to be honest. But apparently they do give away 10 free stays for a week every six months. Yeah. So if you want your chance to win, it's probably the world's maddest lottery. It really is. <laughs> it's that time of day. The horses are going out. The ATVs, look how many are queued up behind them. Oh my Lord, look. As far as the eye can see, the wind's really picked up now. Oh, there's more ATVs coming. We've actually got our dive masks in the van, I just said to Chris. When, we, when you're walking on the really dusty roads, maybe we should just put our dive masks on. <laughs> I think these masks should be in Cappadocia all year round, even when there isn't a pandemic. <laughs> so we're, we're popping into town. We thought we'd uh, go and have a little drink, finish off a wonderful day. More ATVs! Just in case you don't believe what I say, there's more. 
Guess what? There's more. This morning, we're leaving Cappadocia and heading up to Ankara. But before we do, I want to check, first of all, that there's no cats in the uh, engine. And second of all, I want to check the coolant level. When we posted the last video, taking the cat, the kitten out of the engine block, we received a lot of comments about the coolant level and that it was low. And you're right, it was low. So thank you to everybody that messaged. We've topped it up. However, it's low again, which means we've sprung a leak. Probably one of the naughty cats has knocked a pipe off in oh, the engine. I can see a kitten down there in the engine. There's a kitten. If I stop moving, you can probably oh, see yeah. something moving. That's a kitten. Um, and of course, they get in there and they have a little play. So it's probably just knocked a pipe a little bit Let's loose. Let's have a look underneath. Is there any wetness on the floor? There's no wetness. One of the many culprits. <laughs> Mummy. And the other one. And the third one's under the engine somewhere. It must be a very slow leak because we topped it up about four days ago and it's just gone under the minimum. So I'm going to top it up again and then we'll go and find a garage as a priority. It's really important to check that you've got everything in the van before you leave. You mustn't forget anything and obviously you mustn't pick anything up. Uh, <laughs> what have we got in the van? We've got stowaways. we got stowaways. There's a cat, there's a kitten or two. Okay, I think we've been invaded. There's cats on the dashboard. We're gonna have to make sure we count every single kitten. I've lost track of where they are. We might become owners of a cat. So we've spoken to our friend Murat, the uh, campsite owner here, and he's given us uh, a contact of a garage in Nevshahir, which is a town on our way anyway. So we're gonna go and uh, see if we can get Trudy fixed. Arriving in the town of Nevshahir, and now we're just going to find the garage. This whole area is full of cave dwellings. Uh, it's just not limited to Garemi. It's literally Nevshahir. The whole area here has got them. There's a what? It's a woman walking with the chicken. Just literally. <laughs> Your kind of people. That's my kind of thing. Okay, turn left under the bridge. I can't believe how dirty Trudy's windscreen is. I think we're gonna have to stop for a, a wash. The dust has just got too much. So we're coming into the industrial zone where they've got all the repair shops here. <laughs> all giving us big smiles. So the shop we've come to is a, a part shop. It does sell things like coolant, but it's actually closed. But what we need to do is try and find a garage to check all the pipework under the van. <laughs> Should we go and ask somebody? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to try and buy some coolant as a starting point, just so we got some spare. So the guys have said bring the van round. And uh, oh, there's a repair shop I think just round the corner. Everybody always helps you. <laughs> so the guy's just giving Trudy a little check underneath, just seeing if he can find the leak. So well, we've, they've sent us to another mechanics opposite. Um, so we'll just have a we'll just have a look here and see if these guys can uh, can help us at all. So these guys are going to help us. They're going to uh, buy some stuff to put into the coolant system to repair because they think it's a small leak. And uh, it's all good. Everybody here in Turkey will help you. 
Okay, perfect. 40 TL later, we're fixed, right? <laughs> Actually, Trudy hasn't broken down. She's in the middle of the road because there was a car parked next to us and Marianne did a bit of double parking. So it looks like she's been abandoned right in the middle of the street. <laughs> Okay, Trudy has been checked. All is good. There doesn't appear to be any major leaks. It must be a very slow one. They've treated it. We're back on the road. As I am sure you have seen on the news, it's made international news. There has been some terrible wildfires here in Turkey and indeed globally. Now, temperatures are forecast to hit well above 40 degrees Celsius this week in southern Turkey, which is battling a series of devastating wildfires. We've received hundreds of messages from all of you asking us how we are after these tragic wildfires, and we want to say thank you to you. The huge firefighting operation is continuing. We've been in regular contact with our Turkish friends throughout Turkey in the affected areas and we are pleased to announce that all of our friends are currently safe. Tragically, many people in Turkey have lost their homes, their livelihoods and in some cases even their lives due to these fires which have been the worst for decades. Eight people have died in the worst blazes the country has seen in a decade. Our thoughts and prayers go out during this difficult time to all the Turkish people who have been affected by these fires.